people try to destroy our name, we trust in God. When people lie on us, we trust in God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. And what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission, perfect delight. I know the of tomorrow has ordered my side. So this is my story. This is my song. Praising my risen King and Savior all the day long. I trust in my Savior, oh, the one who will never fail, he will never fail. I trust, I trust in God, my Savior, oh, the one who will never Trust in God, my Savior. And he answered, I saw the Lord, 
and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I saw the Lord. Supplies my every need. That's why. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I saw the Lord. situation, whatever it is. We face some difficult things in our lives. We have some days that are not exactly the way we want them. They, go, they don't always go the way we want them to go, but we trust in God. Circumstances don't look like we want them to look, but we trust in God. The Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. We, we, we don't look at what's temporary. We don't look at what's natural because everything we see is subject to change. So we continue to believe God. We continue to trust God. We continue to look to Him. And that's where we get that blessed assurance. That's where we get our, get our hope. That's where we get our foundation under our feet and we're able to stand in the midst of whatever's going on. 
Well, I tell you, that song right there, it moves me every time. It moves me in my spirit. It moves me in my emotions. I have to hold it together. Because that song ministers to me. I pray that it ministered to you as well. Well, we're going to take a moment to greet one another. So y'all take a moment to do so. And I want to thank God for those of you who are joining us today on Greenwood Acres Live. I pray that the word that's coming will be a blessing to you. We invite you to come here inside the Bishop Friday Caldwell Senior Family Life Center every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. That's at 7530 Greenwood Road. Also, we invite you to come to our north location at 11 o'clock a.m. Uh, at the uh, 2800 North Hearn Avenue. Hey, thank you so much for watching on Facebook and YouTube. We invite you to, to follow us on Facebook and to uh, subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Instagram so that you'll know what's going on with Greenwood Acres every time there's something happening. So we thank God for you and thank God for everybody in the sanctuary today because uh, God is good. God is wonderful. God is great. They're having such a good time in here. Uh, <laughs> it's going to take a minute to get everybody back together. But I think it's important that we get to say hi to one another. Hey, we love to hear from you too. Hey, send a comment. Let us know what you think. Say good morning. Say something while you're watching us live. Amen. 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 All right, I'm going to get you to pause wherever you are, and we're going to pray. Father, thank you for being who you are to all of us. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the word that's coming. Lord, I pray that it falls upon good grounds and hearts ready to receive, that your word will take root in us and bear fruit in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy your love and kindness, your favor that you extend toward us. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. So good to see you all this morning. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. If you would, turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to begin reading at verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to begin at verse 2. Brother, I think you can bring just a little bit of the uh, monitor down and then we'll be good. Just a little bit. Sounds good. Just a little ringy. There we go. Thank you. Perfect. In 1 Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning at verse 2, it says, As free, Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples or examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject, subject to one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And for a simple subject today, stay humble. Stay humble. So the assumption today is that everybody's already there. That everybody's already humble. Because we'll find out, you know, no secret because we've already read it, that if we don't humble ourselves, we're going to get humbled. Amen? Amen. And we're going to look at humility in, a couple, in, in several ways today. But I want to go back and I'm going to pick up at the fifth verse of 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 5 says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. So there are several things here that we can see just in a couple of verses. And the first one says that Peter is saying to the church, he said, look, hey, you young people, submit yourselves, rank under, rank under. 
the elder. Rank under those who are older. Submit yourselves. And one of the problems that a lot of people have today, whether they're young or old, is, is, is being able to submit to somebody else. <laughs> it, it's just, it, it, it's, a, it's a thing. Okay, all right, let's go back to the beginning. Not to the beginning, let's go back to the first person who couldn't submit himself. The devil could not submit himself to God. He decided to start a, a, a revolt, a rebellion, and he got kicked out of heaven along with a third of the angels. A third of the angels thought, hey, this dude might be the dude. Let's, uh, let's follow him. He couldn't submit to God. He said that he was going to set himself above God. And then we see what happened. All right? Adam and Eve couldn't submit to the will of God, couldn't, couldn't submit to the obedience of, to, to, uh, to obey God. They decided to obey the devil. We see what happened. So submission is important. So young people, you're supposed to have some respect to your elders, towards your elders, for your elders. Amen. Children are supposed to have, submit to your parents. Young people, no matter where you are, at school, in the mall, at the theater, at the golf course, you submit, you rank under, you show respect to those who are older than you. It's one of the things that will help you get to go a long way. People recognize it when you are respectful, when you are humble. It's very easily seen. Then, then it goes on to say, so submit yourselves to the other. And then it goes on, it says, uh, yea, all of you be subject one to another. Now, how is it that I can be subject to you and you can be subject to me at the same time? Because sometimes in some situations, you are subject to me because in certain situations, I'm in charge. But when I walk through that door to come and sit down here, you know who's in charge? The sister sitting over here who is the head usher. And I'm supposed to submit to her and to those who work with her and to move into the seat that she requests me to sit in. Now, you know some of y'all come in here and I ain't sitting up there. And some of you come, <laughs> I ain't got an attitude. Oh, no, no, I don't sit that close. It's too hot up there. The word, I, I got to sit back here so, so after the word it hit a few other people, then it hit me, it's not so, not, not, not so strong. Too much fire up there, we're supposed to rank under. We're supposed to submit to one another. So just because I'm the pastor here doesn't mean that I don't have to submit. Doesn't mean that I don't have to rank under at times. Everybody has a, a, will be in a position where, you know, I, I, I submit to that which the media team tells me to do sometimes. They go, well, Pastor Dye, we need to do it this way. Okay. Yeah, I, I can. I know I can overrule. So the first thing, my first point I should have said already is we supposed, we're supposed to humble ourselves before God. We have to humble ourselves before God. So we, we're subject, younger or subject to the older uh, we are subject to one another. And then the next part, part of that verse says, and be clothed with humility. We should put humility on. We should wear humbleness. We should act humble. It should be a part of our character. And it goes on to say that God resists the proud. God is opposed to the proud. You know that, that, that scripture that says that of those seven things that God, those six things, then he says seven that he hates. A proud look. God resists the proud. I call it, I use the word pretentiousness. I can't stand it. Don't be fake. Just don't be fake. You know, just be who you are. Okay. But God resists the proud. People who can't submit. Can't submit to him. Can't submit to authority. Can't, can't submit to order. We want it to be our way. You know, get in the line at McDonald's. You, you, some people try to, I, I, I was told recently about this man. He, I mean, it, it's going to make about a two or three minute difference as to where you are in line once you get to the front. And you know, they had those two lines. And this person just about to run over somebody. 
couldn't submit to the fact that it was her turn. <laughs> we want to jump in line. We can't submit. But the, the word again says God resists the proud. God opposes the proud. Then he goes on to say, but he gives grace to the humble. He gives favor. It's one way to look at that to the humble. To the humble. Brother, I hear some music playing. I think we might need to stop a CD. All right. Then he goes on to say, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Rank under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourselves before God. And this is the result. That he may exalt you in due time. And see, this is what God said to Abram. He said, look, I will make your name great. See, a lot of times we want to make ourselves great. We want to be noticed. We have our cards. We have our websites. We have our social media sites. And it's all in an effort by some to make our name great. Because I need to get some views. I need to get some likes. God said he'll make a name great. God, 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 God will put you in front of kings and queens, presidents, senators. But he'll make your name great. It is not our responsibility to go out and try to make a name for ourselves. So God said, I will exalt you in due time. At the proper time, you will be where you're supposed to be. There are people within this ministry who work for years under other people in the ministry, and at the proper time, they became the person to lead that ministry. At the proper time. And most of the time, the ones that get to lead are the ones that weren't even looking for it. They're not the ones who were going like, I can't wait. You know, I, I, love, the, I love the movie of the Lion King. The little boy, what's his name? Simba. When, when, you know, oh, I just can't wait to be king. Nobody saying, do this. Nobody saying, stop that. Nobody saying, be here or be there. I'm free to run around all day. Free to do it all my way. I don't have to submit to nobody because I'm the king. And the thing that people sometimes forget when they get in authority is that they still have to submit to somebody else. So we're to stay humble before God and he will raise us up. He will lift us up. He will make your name great. You don't have to tell everybody your name. You don't need a card. You don't need a title. God will see to it that you are where he wants you to be getting what you deserve. And every reward is not on this side. Some of the rewards are going to be away from here when we get up there. So don't be so in such a hurry. And, and, and I'll say what someone told me when I began to go into administration, when I left the classroom to be an administrator. Basically, the person told me, pace yourself. Don't be in a hurry to be in charge. And what she said was, because of the age I was at the time, that's a long time to be in charge. And I tell you what, I appreciated those words. It helped to guide me through my career. It helped me to think about it. I, and yeah, I still had to learn some things. Because see, one of the things that happens a lot of times, with, well, yeah, I go on to say it now since it's there now. A lot of times, because I had to rank under. I was an assistant principal first. Mm-hmm. And you know, everybody thinks they can run things when they're the assistant. I learned better. I learned that I had to learn. And I'm thankful to God that he didn't allow me to be promoted, that he didn't allow me to move forward. Because that was a point in time when I was supposed to be ranking under. I had a bad attitude. Didn't have my mind right. And the last thing I needed to do was to go somewhere and be in charge of people and with a mind like I had. And God corrected me. And then when I got myself right, then God promoted me. I wasn't even looking. I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just happy to be happy again. I was, I, I, I was, I was mad. Going to work mad. And the Lord had to correct my attitude. 
And when I got my attitude straight, then the Lord opened the door. The devil tried to shut it, but he couldn't. And every door since then is open. Oh, every time is open. So God, everything that I ever got, God did it. I don't owe nobody. I didn't bow down to nobody, but I did submit to the authority that I, that I was to submit to at the time. And I did what I was supposed to do. In Matthew 23, 12, it says this, and, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. See, when we humble ourselves, we will be exalted. And see, pride is that word that, 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 is, uh, that is just the opposite of humility. Pride is a word that, that has some, some uh, synonyms like arrogance. It, it, it goes along with perverse speech and also goes along with evil behavior. When people, want, when people walk in pride rather than being humble, they'll do anything. They'll crawl over you, they'll scratch you, they'll slap you, they'll poke you, they'll poke you in the eye to get to a place, to get to a position. And this word haughty, sometimes that, that word has to do with being arrogant, disdainful. So God, that's the opposite of humility. In Micah chapter 6, I'm going to read verses 6 through 8 because I want to get to verse 8. And, in, and it makes a little better sense if we read verses 6 and 7 with it. And it says this, Micah 6. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and, how, and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly? Before thy God. More than sacrifice in the Old Testament, God desired that man walk humbly. God said in another place that obedience is better than sacrifice. Walk humbly before thy God. We should walk humbly. We should humble ourselves before the Lord. In Matthew chapter 18, we're going to read verses 1 through 4. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. We should humble ourselves before God. Verse 1 says this. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye can be converted and become as a little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And you know the disciples came to Jesus with these questions more than once, and he, he, they asked him, said, well, you know, we, you know, a couple of them, we want to we we be your, your main dudes up in heaven. We want to be the guys that you, we want to be the go-to. How do we get to that position? And Jesus said, the, the way up is down. The way to get up is to go down. It's to be humble. So when he said, whosoever that's for shall humble himself as a child. You know, children are typically humble. They have to learn arrogance. <laughs> they have to learn pride. Children, just, they just children. And they're humble by nature until they're taught or they learn or they see or in their nature these things start coming out. So we, if we want to be somebody in the kingdom of God, we have to humble ourselves. We have to come as a child would come. Humble ourselves. The next thing that God, uh, the next point I want to make is that we, we are to humbly submit ourselves to others. Humbly submit to others. And this is the part where we sometimes have a difficult time. How do I submit to somebody else? 
in Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 3. Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Okay, vainglory. But in lowliness of mind or in humility, let each esteem other better than themselves. See, I can't have this complex in myself that I'm already better than everybody else. I can't have this complex or this mindset in myself that I'm already better than you. And when I walk into the room, everybody should be actually taking a knee and bowing down, or at least, you know, hey. I should esteem others better than myself. Let uh, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Now, Jesus was an example of this kind of humility. Verse five, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. See, Jesus understood his place. Jesus understood, better, better, a better word, Jesus understood his position. And see, sometimes, sometimes when people have position, they, they have to, they believe or think that they have to make a whole lot of noise because I'm in a position. I got to pick my gavel up and hit it real hard because I'm the judge. I, I, I got I to I raise my voice at you because I am the supervisor. Don't you see on the name tag? It got my name and supervisor. Don't you know who I am? Jesus said, uh, Jesus knew he was God in the flesh. Jesus knew who he was and he didn't think it was improper. To be equal with God. But yet watch what it says. But made himself of no reputation. Jesus didn't have a website. Jesus didn't have no business cards. Jesus didn't even. Jesus didn't shied away for a long time. From even letting people know he was the Messiah. When the time came he said so. Because he knew when he started to say it. That he was going to die. And Jesus could have come out. And when he was 12 years old in the temple, well, you know, I just need y'all to know <laughs> I'm the Messiah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all understand that? I'm, 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 I am God's son. And, 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 and one day all y'all going to have to bow to me. Y'all understand that? You know, Joseph, you know, it, it, some think that when Joseph told his family about those dreams, there was a little bit ahead. But Joseph... Though, though, though all those things started coming back to them when they really happened, didn't they? Joseph, Joseph probably didn't quite understand exactly what was going on. But those dreams told what would happen later on. They had to rank under their younger brother. Okay, verse 7 again, but, but made uh, Jesus, speaking of Jesus, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Jesus decided that for us, he was going to get in a body, make himself vulnerable, lower himself as low as he could go, short of being an animal. And we have a hard time letting somebody in, in line. We, we driving along and they trying to get in. We know they got to get in. The, the arrow flashing, everybody got to get over. And we just, we on the other person bumper this close because we can't rank on. Uh, you ain't getting in front of me. Can't even submit. <laughs> you ready to get your car, your, 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 your left mirror toe up, your front bumper all straight, scratched up, and you got to pull over now and get and get a police off a police report because you couldn't submit yourself and allow somebody to get in front of you. Jesus did not, Jesus knew his position, but he didn't try to make his position so important 
that everybody had to bow to him. Jesus did not. Jesus had 12 men up close, but he had other followers. He washed their feet. He said, if you want to be great, serve somebody. Man, talking about humbling. Y'all go out there and walk around on the streets of Jerusalem where the, the donkeys are walking, the cows are walking. There is no pavement. You got poo on your feet. Now come wash my feet now. That's, not, that's a humbling experience. So he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. See, Jesus didn't try to usurp God's authority. Jesus did not try to be God. Jesus said, whatever the Father does, that's what I do. Whatever I see the Father do, that's what I do. He ranked under God. And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. Obedience comes along with humility. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Jesus gave up everything. Jesus said, I will humble myself. I will die in a body for y'all, for me. Wherefore, God also, now, Z, now where is Jesus now? At the right hand of the Father. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Do you need a name? Jesus didn't go about trying to make everybody say his name. Now he got a name that everybody's going to bow to at some day. Everybody, whether you do it on this side or that side, everybody's going to bow. Everybody's going to take a knee. Everybody's going to say Jesus is Lord. It's better to say it now than to have to say it later. It's better to say it voluntarily now than to have to say it later. Jesus, we say, is our Savior. But is he our Lord? See, if he's our Lord, we rank under. We do what he says. We obey him. We listen to what he says. And we don't let nothing else run us. But what he said, and most of what he said, we're going to find in his word. And it goes on to say, in every tongue, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Everybody's going to have to say Jesus is Lord. So you better, if you're going to recognize, better recognize now while you're breathing. <laughs> you watching? <laughs> if you're going to recognize. Recognize now while you're breathing. James chapter uh, 4, verse 6. James chapter 4, verse 6. We have to submit to each other. We have to submit to God. James chapter 4, beginning at verse 6, says this, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he says, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto God, therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We, we, we submit to God, we resist the devil. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hand, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to, to, to heaviness. Verse 7 is what I'm really after there. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Verse 10. Humble therefore yourselves in the sight of God and he shall lift you up. And I've already said that we should submit to one another. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Ephesians 5, 21. Ephesians 5, 21 says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And here we are again, submitting ourselves one to another. 
submitting one to another. Sometimes even when you're right, you should submit to somebody else. You know, love will allow you to submit. Love is not proud. Love is not haughty. Love is not rude. And sometimes for peace, we may submit to what somebody else wants. We don't want to. I didn't say go and do something wrong because somebody wants you to. But sometimes there are situations where, okay, all right, we'll go with that. Especially in a marriage relationship. And sometimes even when you, when you are in charge of other people, somebody has an idea, you say, you, you, you're not 100% on it, but you say, okay, all right, we'll try it. You know, it's not going to make the building burn down. It's not going to stop us from doing our work. We'll see how it goes. Verse 22, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Now, I know in these days, <laughs> uh, uh, Pastor, that was back over 2,000 years ago, and, and you know, things have changed. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. I don't know why it said your own husband, but that's what it said. <laughs> so you ain't supposed to be submitting to somebody else's husband. So if your sister girl and told you some stuff about how her husband do it, it ain't got nothing to do with your house. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband, just like you submit yourself to the Lord. Now, I'm not going to make this a marriage seminar, so we're going to move on. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, let, let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, husbands, you have actually a harder job. Love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, you're supposed to give yourself for your wife. Mm-hmm. You don't take nothing off nobody messing with your wife. <laughs> so, so you, you know, here come a bullet. <coughs> I did that for my wife. <laughs> I, I'll be honest, there was a time we were out in Colorado. We were going around, uh, we were walking a trail, and uh, a fox came along. And, uh, you know, sometimes animals in the wild can be rabid. And so my, my first thought was, okay, I got my wife and my two kids. I got to get them somewhere behind me, and I got to get in front of this. I'm serious. You know, and I even thought about saying, if a bear come, I guess I'm going to be the one get, you know, I'm going to be out there in front. In the name of Jesus, I have authority over you, bear. And you will submit right now. <laughs> but I was prepared to get in front of that. I, I, I was getting them gathered by me, and I was getting in front of it. It was just looking for something to eat. It was over there trying to catch something. like It was either a squirrel or mouse or, or what do you call those things, a chipmunk that were around there as well. So husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So we're to submit to one another. We're to submit to God. You know, Paul wrote most of the epistles, and he said, I count all that as dumb. And he said, I'm the least of the apostles. All that he did, I'm the least of the apostles. And then Paul said, in another place, you know, Paul had this, this messenger for, from Satan to buffet him, lest he be exalted above measure. And he thought he sought the Lord to remove it. And he said, my grace is sufficient. And the word messenger has to do with the person. Whether it was an angel from the devil. Whatever his, pur his purpose was to keep Paul grounded. Keep him from getting out of sorts. The Bible says knowledge puffs up. Knowledge, knowing stuff. Oh, you know everything. See, I used to know everything there was about an iPhone. 
You start talking to me, I've already diagnosed it before you say about three or four words. Nowadays, I don't know no more. I know some. But knowledge can puff up. Knowledge give you the big head for those of you who are not getting the puffed up part. You won't be able to get your head out the double doors. <laughs> knowledge will cause you to swell up and to be prideful. Jesus said this in Matthew 23, verses 11 and 12. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. You want to be great? Serve. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. You want to be in the exalted position? Humble yourself. In, in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, it says this, and I know I'm going fast, uh, Brother Minister, uh, write it down. I'm talking to my minister over there, Minister Lanier. He said, Pastor Dodd, slow down. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 3 says, For I say unto you, I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. According as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So we're not supposed to be out of sorts. We're not supposed to, you know, we're not supposed to get high on our own supply. We're not supposed to be drunk on who we think we are. We're not supposed to get drunk on our accomplishments and all. Ah, 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 ah. So we're supposed to walk humbly among each other. In Luke chapter 14, uh, beginning at verse 7, Jesus uh, told about, gave a parable. I'm not going to read it for time's sake. But in this parable, everybody was invited to a wedding. And when you're invited to a wedding, they normally, these days, they have little tent cards, especially at the reception. And so these men came in, or this person came in, and said, don't come in and take the front seat. And then when everybody gets there, they realize, oh, well, the front row was reserved for these people, uh, and now the whole place is filled in, and you'll walk yourself all the way up to the front. And the only seats left now are in the back. And they see the usher come and get you and walk you all the way to the back. And it's that chair, you know, that the leg's not straight on. <laughs> and he goes on in verse 11 of that chapter to say, for whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And one of the, the, the last things I'll say is that we, we, need to be, we need to humbly submit to authority. You know, in 1 Peter chapter 2, I am going to read some of these verses. 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 13, it says this, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man, for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. And I know it's hard sometimes and we see young people especially having a hard time submitting to the police. There, there, there's, there's an opposition, there's a concern when an officer comes up to you because you don't know how he might respond. I suggest to you, you have young black men in your family that you talk to them about how to deal with the police if they get pulled over, if they encounter the police somewhere. So they know what to do. They have a plan. Amen. Not to put themselves in a position of harm. Because they have authority behind them. So the president has authority, the governor has authority, the police chief has authority, and that authority is sent down to all of those who work under them. And we do well to ensure, number one, that we don't do something that we shouldn't do. And the best thing to do to humble yourself when it comes to some authority, be quiet. I didn't know the police could arrest you for cussing at them. I mean, I ain't get arrested for that now. <laughs> but I found out 
The police, the, it's called, I, I believe it's called battery on an officer when you use profanity at one. So don't, just, mm. Mm, mm -hmm. If you didn't do nothing, let it work out, work itself out in court. Stay alive. Verse 15, for so is the will of God that, 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 that we're supposed to do well. So is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put, on, put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Then it goes on. Servants, and in that time they were slaves, but you work for somebody. Servants, be subject to your supervisor. Employees, be subject to your supervisor with all fear, with reverence. Not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the forward. You're supposed to obey your boss. Now, if it's, a workable, if it's not a workable situation, you start working your way out of there. Amen. But why are you there? Whether they good or bad. Submit. Amen. Be subject to. Verse 19 says, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscious toward God endure grief, suffering wrongly. What glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. And see, that doesn't mean that always that you don't say something. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to say something. Now, they already had a good reputation. They were the smartest of the men, along with Daniel. But it came to something they just could not do. And respectfully, King, we can't bow. And we believe that our God is able to deliver us. And even if he doesn't, he's able. Yes, he is. Daniel wasn't going to submit to a law that he could not support. Daniel continued to pray in his window. And God delivered him. Now we know that everybody didn't get delivered. People were cut asunder. People were burned at the stake. People were killed. They were fed to lions because they believed God. But God promises there's an exaltation that takes place on the other side. I don't want to be eaten by no animal. But you think I'm going to bow to something else? As opposed to believing God and trusting him? And the last thing I'll say is God rewards humility. God rewards humility. In, verse, in, in Proverbs 16, 18, Proverbs 16, 18, it says this, that pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit, an exalted, arrogant, prideful spirit before a fall or before a downfall or before ruin, ruin or before destruction. Proverbs 18, 12, before destruction, before ruin, affliction or suffering due to disobedience, the heart is made haughty. See, before destruction... A haughty heart comes. Being exalted, ag arrogant, and prideful. And before honor is humility. You know, Haman wanted to be honored so bad that he ended up being publicly hanged, hung. Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride 
shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. A man's pride shall bring him low. In other words, a man's pride is going to humble him. So you're going to get humble anyway, so why not? Just be there from the beginning. And then you end up. So you're going to start out here and end up there. Start here and end up here. But your mind got to be right. Pharaoh had a hard time. He could not humble himself. He refused to humble himself before God. And it led to the ruin of Egypt. I mean, his army got drowned. Horses, chariots, all the stuff because he couldn't humble himself before God. Judas couldn't humble himself to repent before God. Pride will lead you down a road to destruction. So I submit to you today stay humble. Be humble before the Lord. Submit humbly in your relationships with each other. Submit humbly to the authority of people. And understand very clearly that God will reward you for your humility. Amen. Stay humble. Let's give God some praise for his word today. I want to thank God for those of you who joined us today by Facebook and YouTube. Have you submitted yourself today to the Lord? The Bible said that we're to submit ourselves under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt us. And the Bible also tells us that we're all going to submit ourselves to Jesus, that we're all going to bow down to Jesus. Have you submitted yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you, have you made him your Savior and your Lord? Now, some of us have made him our Savior, but is he your Lord? Are we submitting to his will? But if you've not submitted to Jesus Christ as your Savior, I invite you to do so now. Say, Jesus, I believe that you are Lord. I believe that you died and rose from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Save me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. We love to reach out to you. There'll be information on the screen that will allow us to reach for you to reach out to us and we'll reach back out to you. We also invite you to send us your prayer requests and your praise reports. Let's give God some thanks and praise for those who join us today by Facebook and YouTube. Sometimes it's hard for people.